Welcome everyone. Thank you for coming to this meeting very much. Um, we are here to review portions of uh, draft one of the phase of our uh, update of our zoning code. Um, we have our consultants in town, Lee Einsweiler from Austin, Texas with uh, Code Studio. Uh, Kevin Howard. Howard, also from Code Studio with Austin, Texas. Uh, they're here to explain what they proposed uh, and talk a little bit about why we're here. Uh, and also listen to get some feedback from you all. Um, we've got some posters up around the room. Um, over here we've got a, a poster of our existing zoning as well as the concept and proposal that, that we're here to talk about tonight. Um, on the other wall we've got some examples of uh, pages from a code and some other examples that we'll be happy to go over with you uh, once we finish the presentation and, and you can wander around the room and see what we have out here. Um, did I introduce myself? Heather Chang, City Planner, City of Concord. Um, and welcome. With that, I'm going to hand it over to you. Perfect. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. So, uh, good to see you. Some of you I've uh, seen before, so thank you for coming out again. Some are new faces. I'm uh, happy to have you here as well. Um, we're we're going to do, hopefully, a relatively short presentation, 20 minutes or so. And um, uh, then what we'd really like to do is uh, spend a little time talking with you either about your property or other properties you might be concerned about that these rules might apply to. So um, uh, let me start um, uh, by saying we want to talk a little bit about why we're here, why are we even engaging in this exercise. Uh, and one of the keys to that is that um, uh, uh, your existing regulations don't match what's on the ground. We've been sort of telling this story for a while in town. Um, and right now, uh, in many cases, if you want to improve an older home in the community, you've got to get a variance to move forward. You are um, often limited as the owner of that lot in what you can do because for the most part, moving forward means you are supposed to be in conformance with things. And if you're not in conformance today, then you first have to get into conformance before you can even talk about new things that you might want to do. New homes are inadvertently incentivized potentially to be out of character with your neighborhood. They're, they're encouraged by some of the ways the rules are written to do what we might not consider the right thing, even though they're trying to follow all of the rules. And the fact of the matter is Concord suffers from, from having a housing market that has been successful for years and you don't have access to anything at any price point right now. It's very difficult to find a house, very difficult to find a place to rent. It's a, it's a tough market because you have high occupancy rates um, uh, and that's a good thing. Uh, downtown and the neighborhood centers are also part of this early conversation. So what we call the mixed use districts are also being tackled. Um, in those cases, one of the key things is that as new development comes into those areas, we should like them better after the development than we did before the development arrived, right? So if they're actually detracting from the character in multiple ways, whether they're taking buildings down that we thought had character and they're making a surface parking lot, for many reasons we have been detracting from the character with some of our recent development activity. Um, many times the site is focused on the parking. You really can't use it very effectively as a pedestrian. It is really set up for you to park right out front, jump out of your car and go in. Um, in many cases outside of the downtown, the downtown has a fabulous pedestrian network, but outside the downtown, especially in the smaller neighborhood centers, sometimes they struggle in terms of their pedestrian connections, the quality of the sidewalks, the connectivity between one development and the next. So today, according to the zoning, many of you live somewhere that is substandard or non-conforming, doesn't meet the requirements of today's code. Mostly because many of those were built before the code was put in place. And when the code went into place, many of the standards, many of the numbers used in it, actually um, uh, were for a different character of development than those neighborhoods hold historically. So we went back and looked at the character of places. This particular place is zoned, I believe, RN today, but it does not meet today's requirements. And yet if we look at the neighborhood, 
and we ask ourselves, that little white house that's just to the left of the blue tarp there, does that fit into the neighborhood? It looks like it fits in pretty well to me. So we need to match the rules back to the fabric of the community. So that's a big piece of this exercise. So here's just an example of this particular house and the ways it does not meet the rules. It is, the lot is not wide enough. The left-hand side setback is not uh, accurate. The lot area is too small. It does meet some of the standards, the rear setback, the front setback, and the right-hand side setback. It meets those standards. So it is, it is conforming in some ways and, and non-conforming in others. The trouble is, what's the simplest way to fix all those non-conformities? Buy the next lot over and then build. And if I build then, I might end up building this image on the right, which is totally conforming, right? Follows all of the rules, all the things are checked, meets all the setbacks, etc. but it belongs in a different district. It's not to say it doesn't belong in Concord at all, it's really just to say, you better have a bigger piece of land if you're trying to do that. So we're creating incentives uh, to some people, potentially, to reach into some of our older neighborhoods, take out existing fabric, and put back something that we're not really happy with. So that's really part of the key reason that we're working on the residential districts. So I don't have to go into all the statistics. You guys are living them on a day-to-day -day basis. But basically, um, it's really hard to get into your housing market. Um, it's hard to find a house to buy. It's hard to find a place to rent. Um, as the outsider, that's a challenge. But for the homeowner, the challenge we were discussing earlier is also there. If you want to upgrade your home, if you choose to age in place and you need some modifications to your home associated with aging in place, like a more accessible kitchen or a downstairs bedroom or whatever else, um, if you're trying to generate a little rental income to help you pay the taxes on the place, if you're opting for multi-generational living, your children have come back and they're in the basement right now and you want to give them some higher quality space, um, the barriers are often, if, in order for you to invest in your property, you also have to uh, uh, go through the variance process because something doesn't match today's rules. There's little flexibility in the system. If you're non-conforming, you can get through it. You can get through a process and get there, um, but it's a challenge. And then in many cases, both the accessory unit provisions and the conversion provisions are a bit impractical. So the state, uh, a number of years ago, said to every community throughout the entire state uh, that they must include options for accessory dwelling units. Concord uh, chose to do that as a, a part of the main building. Does not allow a detached accessory dwelling unit, but if you put it in the main building, either through adding an addition or carving out some space in the existing building, you can have an accessory dwelling unit. So already we don't have any <clears throat> pure single family zoning. We have two units on each lot, uh, courtesy of the state a number of years ago. Um, the rules that you've set out for accessory dwelling units are not as gracious as many communities might have, um, perhaps not uh, communities already here in New Hampshire, but across the country, certainly there are uh, much more favorable accessory dwelling unit uh, options. And conversions of many existing units are impractical because again, I can't convert something supposedly that's non-conforming, I'm not supposed to, so if my side lot line's wrong, because it was built there or it was surveyed wrong years ago or whatever else, um, uh, it's, it's hard to get through those processes. So basically things don't fit. You have a problem too when it comes to thinking about your mixed use development and the, really the key problem is, is that you are um, encouraging convenience for a specific user over the community's interests as a whole. So. In this case, I don't know how long ago this parking lot happened, but a long time ago. But they didn't leave any space for a building along this street, for example. And it would have been really nice if the parking lot had been back behind and hidden by a building. Um, and in fact, they didn't even go so far as to landscape it except with bollards, and I don't think the bollards are very attractive myself. So I really wouldn't call it much in the way of landscaping. 
but it's super convenient to be able to park right there and you know go just down the hill to the office building or whatever. Um, we also somehow missed out on some of the places for people. Again, not quite certain when this building came, but it's post the adoption of zoning in this community, right? It's relatively new in the scheme of things. And yes, I've heard that this street is actually going to be uh, uh, redone sometime soon. and It'll get new sidewalks, etc. But for however many years, we've been living with a sidewalk, which is asphalt and looks just like the street and looks just like the parking lot. And uh, this young boy that's walking across here is not really in a very safe condition. There's no curb there to protect him from the cars, etc. And this is a neighborhood commercial setting. This is supposed to be the smallest setting which fits in the best with our neighborhoods and allows us to walk for convenience. Not that you necessarily walk to your orthodontist, but you know, gives us that opportunity. So what are we trying to achieve with these new regulations we're proposing? The number one thing is the protection of this community's character. So what is the character? That's a battle we can all have, but zoning regulates certain things. And so what are the zoning tools that we can use to start working on the preservation of the character of the community? So one of the things that we want to talk about is one of the things that helps the community, both from the homeowner's perspective and from the newcomers or existing person who has a job here but can't find a way into the housing market, is for us to think more flexibly about what the options are. So we've got a little uh, poster over here that you guys can look, that the one that says, let's make Concord work for you. And I'm gonna show you a couple of the panels from it. And, and uh, I'll tell you the story so you don't have to squint and read the fine print there. So the woman on the left, she owned the main house potentially, and perhaps one day she decided she was sick and tired of going up and down the stairs to her upstairs bedroom, and it was too much of a struggle for her to keep up the large house. And so she decided to build a backyard cottage, shown here, and move into that. And then she's renting the main house to help her pay back her loan on the construction of the backyard cottage. And so uh, this husband and wife um, moved back into the mom's house and have a great house in a great neighborhood at a very reasonable cost. They're right close, you know, if the kids show up, they'll, their grandma will be right there in the back house, etc. So this is a, an opportunity for multi-generational living Anybody, of course, could have rented the front house, but really nice to be able to do something um, for that younger family. We also potentially are interested in dress addressing the need for housing without necessarily anybody moving away. So this guy bought this house at a certain point of time, but he's looking to invest his money in some other things, and so he says, hey, I'm gonna split my house up and start sharing it more successfully. In this case, with a single mother, he's going to share a small 750 square foot unit with this single mother, so she no longer has to commute to Concord um, uh, as she moves forward. So uh, she gets to spend extra time with her kids. He's getting extra income out of his existing property. Um, theoretically, good for the community, good for the newcomer. We also, out of all of this, we want an easier to understand code. We want it to be transparent about how the rules work. Um, we want it to be sort of mechanical, something that everybody can understand. As the neighbor, you can read up and figure out what your neighbor's allowed to do, or you can figure out whether a new project you saw is actually following the rules, because everybody can read it. It's in plain English, and it's got graphics with it. Um, uh, so we're, we're aspiring to an easier to understand, easier to read code as well. How are we going to get to that? So one of the things, and some of you have seen this material from uh, uh, our last visits, we did a lot of analysis of the existing neighborhoods. And so for example, that center image is a, a sample area of the RN district that we went and looked at. And all of those brown lots 
were considered non-conforming, right? So a substantial portion of that neighborhood didn't match its rules. If we applied better rules, which are kind of proposed in the little box up there, we would have brought that uh, uh, number that conformed way down. Many of those don't conform now because they're too narrow. They were split out of a larger lot at some point in the past, and now they're too narrow. There are only a couple that are actually totally too small and perhaps out of character, except they're there now. We don't want any more created, but it's fine to keep the ones we have now. So custom tailored, um, with expanded options for every property that help out the homeowner. Um, in, in this case, you're seeing um, in the bottom right corner uh, what we're calling the extra large house, uh, just a single large, single family house that's allowed. We're showing a, a large house with a small addition back on the back in the top left a large house with a detached small addition. And by the way, you could do both of those first two on the left now, today. Um, on the top, you cannot do that detached unit today, but there's not much difference between the attached and the detached. So we believe the detached is an acceptable part of the character of the community. Um, and uh, on the bottom right, we're showing the original main house potentially split into two equal size units therefore providing two smaller units and easier market penetration for, for people either who are, are buying or renting. So expanded options for what the homeowner might offer up to the community. And then um, leveling the playing field for a variety of housing options, meaning it's not biased towards building the biggest house possible. Right? Sometimes the marketplace is biased towards only one certain product. We are, we are putting these all, um, uh, we are making them equivalent by giving them a unit value which starts at 750 square feet, goes to the next largest size at 2x, 1500 square feet, 3x, 2250, and 4x, the 3000 square foot. And each of those is allowed or not allowed in the districts, depending on how much land area you've got. And of course, then there are also other controls like the lot coverage and other things. You may have plenty of land area, but you already used up your lot coverage, in which case you won't get any additional units, right? Go ahead. So uh, leveling the playing field can not only happen based on the new units that you might be adding to the property, but it also might happen within the existing unit. So this is one of the most important elements of character. Your um, residential downtown district has long allowed for conversion and some of it has happened. It's a great way to save existing housing stock. So basically the exact same house, the exact same unit value being split up into two or in this case perhaps two medium homes or into four small homes those options uh, could become available if we adopted the new regulations. In the, when we uh, <clears throat> reach over into the mixed use world, this is an example of neighborhood commercial again. I know it's been a number of things over the years, started out right as a grocery store and is now too small for a grocery store, so a pharmacy, because pharmacies got to be as big as groceries. They used to be small places. Um, but, um, it has some elements that aren't great as a neighborhood commercial building. It has a big long blank wall. There's no trees along the streetscape there. There's no landscaping. There's no landscaping screen around the parking lot. The entrance to the parking lot is as wide as a whole huge big wide street. It's, it's twice or three times the size of a typical driveway entrance here. So anybody biking or walking across from the neighborhood has got to pass that entire swatch, you know, with people coming in at an angle because it's plenty easy to get in there. So um, the site's a little more dangerous and a little less aesthetically pleasing um, uh, than it could be to be a valuable part of the neighborhood. So making places better for the people is, is also part of this process. So how does that all play out in the regulatory language, in the pages of the code? So we're going to give you an example. We've gone back to our friends here, the RN site. Here's the house and the building. Here's the things that were wrong before and the possible outcome. 
Under the new regulations, the first thing we've done is made that existing house conforming, right? We've changed the rules for either what the side setback is or the lot width, perhaps the lot area. We might have actually given it a zoning district that wasn't there at all before, but that happens to match the pattern of development that's there now. So we've made it conform. We've given it the options to have a, a, a single unit in it, uh, two units, two units detached, um, uh, uh, units that might be uh, vertically mixed or attached uh, sideways down the lot. And there are controls here for the streetscape, for the lot itself, pointers to the development standards like parking, landscaping, and lighting that might apply to the site, requirements for the building itself for any accessory building, parking placement, the roof in this case because a, a roof is part of this form, the length of the building, the windows and the doors on the building. All of those character elements are getting us to the point where buildings will fit in as they are, whether they are built new or modified, existing, uh, et cetera. Did I miss anything? Yes? Can you just clarify that um, it's not the intent that the building, for instance, in the back would be removed, though it's not shown in that example one in those graphics, but the assumption is that that building the smaller garage or whatever one back would, would remain there. Could have become the accessory unit. Right. You know, could have become, could have been turned into the small, you know, cottage unit out back as long as it was the correct size and would have to be successfully converted. It's a building permit process. You don't just go do it on the weekend. Um, uh, but, um, but yes, it could have been converted into the additional unit that shows in that third drawing down. Um, and, and um, but it might be torn down in favor of getting a driveway in or something else, you know, choosing to get better access to the rear yard so that you could build something back there. Um, uh, but because the rules are fairly strict about what you can do and the sort of the shape of it, the width of it, a number of other things, it's unlikely you would take the front building down because you don't get more back. You could expand that front building deeper into the lot, but you aren't going to get anything from wiping it off the front of the lot and putting a house back. You'd get this house. So for the most part, it's economically infeasible to, to tear down the front house. It's why not much has been happening in these neighborhoods today. It's economically fee infeasible today for the value that you could get to tear everything down and totally replace it. Your housing market is not accelerating at that kind of rate that you are totally replacing things. But it can absorb new addition of an accessory unit, new detached unit in the rear yard. All of those options would likely be easily absorbed by the market. So what we're hoping you'll do is spend a few more minutes with us looking at the map, talking to us a little bit about the examples that we've got put up because what we're really trying to do is make this zoning fit to the neighborhoods. So we want to hear from everyone about the place that they live and whether they think these options make sense for the area around them, um, if there's anything we've missed. Um, uh, those, are, those are the kinds of things we'd like to talk with you a little bit about this, uh, this evening. Um, I do want to encourage you uh, to go ahead and talk to our team tonight if you've got time. Uh, there are comment cards here. We encourage you to fill out one of those. Um, if you've got questions, you can email them to Heather, and if they're questions for us, they'll get back to us. Um, we'd like you to provide written comments. If you, if you really have the energy for it, you can actually read the document and provide comments. And you're welcome, of course, to, provide, to, to attend the future planning board or city council meetings where these issues are discussed. Go ahead, Heather. Can you give people a brief summary of um, the bigger picture of the process in the other districts? Yes. That are moving? Jump, jump down to the next one for just a minute. So, uh, th this is actually a longer process. You have about half of the document now in the materials you have. The um, provisions for use, for parking and landscaping and maybe lighting, uh, and the provisions for the uh, procedures for development review are the remaining chunk that's missing. So those will be coming in the next month or so. 
Um, uh, when those arrive, we'll do another set of presentations to talk about those pieces and how they affect development in town. Um, it is also important for me to point out, though, that, that these areas uh, outlined in the dark that are darker gray, those areas require not only technical modifications to zoning, but a little additional planning, right? New planning thinking about what those places should be when they grow up. Um, so the area of the mall, for example, um, the, um, uh, the, the highway short of Penacook there, um, there are a number of sites that, that need a vision for the future before we'll know whether we have the right tools to put in place. So we're going to come back hopefully by this fall and begin the process of developing that, that vision with the community. It's something we'll do uh, most likely in the charrette format, which is one where people get right in and make the sausage with us and, and help us figure out what fits on those properties and, and what things could be uh, in the future. Um, in addition, uh, tonight's uh, draft that's posted right now is going to get one round of revisions fairly quickly right after this uh, uh, session. In the next you know, week or two, we're going to do a round of revisions based on our staff conversations internally and on you know, what we hear from you guys, stuff where we might really have oopsed or a whole idea we've missed. Um, we'd like to get those in there. So um, if you are really dying to read the pages of the draft. You might take a deep breath for a week or two. We'll be sending around a note and letting people know uh, when that first round of revisions get posted. That's the one to really do uh, your formal written comments on. Go ahead, Heather. Just to follow up on that, you'll notice in the draft now there's some placeholders. Yeah. Uh, so those are the things also that... All of those, the graphics will be updated. Out. And, and then when we get that, it'll, it'll, we'll have about 30 days to make comments and and get some comments into him so that we can move on to the, the next phase of, of phase one, the next portions of phase one. So um, uh, I'm uh, going to uh, break the meeting up now, but um, I'm, I'm glad to talk to any of you about questions you might have, and we'd love to actually bring you around to have a look at the boards and, and, and have a look at the map. So.